something um, that we started talking about. One of the, I'm going to be more than likely back to you next week, so I'm going to keep it brief. Um, we started talking about sowing, planting, reaping, and harvesting from the perspective of stewardship. And we, we talked about that it being important for us to take heed to not only what we say, but also what we do. And how important it is for us to recognize the power that lies truly within us. Um, because truly that's what it boils down to is that Yahweh has placed within us power. Uh, one of the scriptures we read was the fact that when Yahweh made us, he said, let us make man in our own image. So he made us with the power and authority that he has given us. And truly, if you think about it, I, I don't know the scientific number, but I do know that the part of our brain that we actually, or the percentage of our brain that we actually use is extremely small, 10%. And you're considered genius if you're using what? If you're using 20, I mean, that's amazing. So right away, we know that Yahweh has placed within us some serious power. If we can come up with Machines. Look at this machine here. I hit a few buttons and it goes and gets information. I hit a button or two and it connects to a satellite that's out in space, which sends a signal back. And then I can search the entire world wide web of information by hitting one button. One button, I can search the entire, and it doesn't take years. I don't put an order in to, to know anything that starts with the, you know, a, a certain phrase. You know, banking, if I put in banking, guess what comes back immediately when I hit enter? Everything dealing with banking. So we in our finite mind, at 10, 15, maybe 20% usage, can come up with this device. I can speak into this little piece of metal and plastic here, and it takes my voice and amplifies it. I can look into this camera now, and two, three, five, ten years later, I can re-experience this again. And we came up with this stuff. With 10%, maybe 20. So think about the power that lies within each and every one of us. And really consider what Yahweh did when he made us in his image. Right. Consider what he did when he made us in his image. So there's enough power inside of us. And this is another one we read, and I want to go back there and read it really quickly. Genesis 1 and 3. Genesis 1 and 3. And it reads, And Elohim said, Let light come to be. Come on. And light came to be. <laughs> now, I don't care how hard I think, I don't care how much I concentrate, I can't make that light switch come on. And even at that, if somebody, which it, it exists, I mean, it, it's, it's voice activation, all kinds of technology exists. So I can speak it, but something is interpreting that information in order for it to come to pass. And here Yahweh spoke and said, let light come to be, comma, and light came to be. 
So when he created us in his image, guess what power lies within us? Guess what power lies within us? So when we speak, because truly, Yahweh spoke and his words went forth. That's what happened. His words physically went forth and created. The scripture says all that was tangible was made by that which is intangible. So those things that we can see, touch, hear, smell, taste, those things that we can interpret with our senses were created by those things that are invisible. Words. The speaking. The speaking. So, I wanted to get a little deeper into to one section that uh, particularly um, I feel that Yahweh gave me this message to, to really to, to get the understanding uh, of. So, again, the power. The power that Yahweh has put in us. Let's, let's concentrate on that, the power that Yahweh has put in us. So with that power, remember a, a part of our discussion also was about the things that we do so others can see the things that we do, right? Mm -hmm. How you live your life, that light that shines forth so that men will see and they will bless Yahweh. So those things that we do those things that we, not only when we speak, can we speak things into existence, but our actions cause us things to come into existence. There's a part of the brain, and if I can remember the name of it, reticular, ah, reticular, I can't remember the, the rest of it for some reason. R-T-A, I want to say is what it's, what it, the, the short acronym. Should have wrote it down. Reticular, can't remember it. Huh? Yes. What is it? Reticular. Activated. Yes. All right. R A S. Reticular activated system. And basically, this part of our brain, this part of our brain, subconsciously begins to help things to happen. It subconsciously helps us to do when you when you convince yourself. And I'm gonna give you an example. If a woman convinces herself that she's pregnant, she will begin to have pregnancy symptoms. Because that part of her brain is triggering the rest of her system. So you 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 then begin to say that that speak those things that be not as though they were. It's not only in the speaking, but it's also in the doing. So if I say that I am victorious, if I say that I'm a conqueror, if I say I'm this and I'm that, then why should I walk around always talking about, woe is me? Why should somebody ask me, how you doing? Well, you know, things could be better. <laughs> because guess what's happening with your reticular activated system? It's convincing the rest of you that things aren't so great. And guess what begins to happen? Things ain't so great. Things aren't so great. Because you are sowing that seed. Hallelujah. You're sowing that seed. So if we then to take that same principle and begin to understand that Yahweh has placed with us within us this power. This awesome power that truly we don't even understand the fullness of it. That truly we don't even, we haven't experienced the fullness of it. It's beyond everything we could ever imagine or think. Because if we're doing everything that we're doing based on 10 to 20 percent, imagine 100 percent. Imagine 100 percent. So, as we now understand that as we sow, as we plant, we are helping things to come to be, not just what we speak, but also what we do, then I, again, my, my heart really is on the doing, 
all that we do. So let's go to let's go to Ecclesiastes eleven and six. Chapter eleven. Verse six. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. <coughs> and it reads, Sow your seed in the morning, and until evening. Do not let your hand rest, since you do not know which prosper, this or that, or whether both alike are good. Sow your seed in the morning and until evening. Do not let your hand rest, since you do not know which prosper, this or that, or whether both alike are good. So now think about this. Think about what this is saying. Because it's in there, if you read higher up there, it, it's talking about sowing. It's talking about sowing. It starts out, uh, Rabbi's, one of Rabbi's favorite uh, verses, send out your bread on the face of the waters, for after many days you shall find it. That's sowing and reaping. That's sowing and reaping. So truly, when we get down to verse 6 here, it's telling us a very important message. Extremely important for us to, to catch what it's saying right here. And basically, what it's telling us is, don't take any chances. Don't take any chances. If you, if you decide to sow in the morning, and you don't sow in the evening, that evening could be that which is good. Remember when we spoke about this last time, I used the example of you can't look, you can't take a handful of seed and look at it and know. And let's, let's read a little bit of this, this again. At the end of the verse there it says, since you do not know which prosper, this or that, or whether both are alike, alike are good. So you can't pick the seed out of your hand and say, okay, this one is a hundredfold. Okay, this one is tenfold. So this one is, is not even going to reap. I'm not going to reap anything from this, so I'm going to throw it out. So I'm going to get rid of that. <coughs> could you imagine if we could do that? Wouldn't you always get rid of the bad seeds? Would, would, I mean... Isn't that like a no-brainer? You know? But Yahweh did not allow it for a very particular reason. Our hearts. Because we would not sow like we're supposed to. Why not? Because we can figure out what's good and bad. So if I'm going to sow into your life, I'm doing it really because I know that that's the sowing that's going to reap a benefit for me. Right. So I'm going to do the right thing in front of Kitty because I saw that it, there were some results on later on down the road. But when I get in front of my buddies at work who don't know that I'm Rabbi too, <laughs> then I do a little differently. Why? Because ain't nothing going to come from that seed anyway. I can already see that, right? So Yahweh says right here, so from the morning until the evening. So in other words, we should always, at all times, all times, uh, you know, just simply be on your game. Be on top of your game. Because you never know the seed that you are sowing, whether that's a hundredfold. And the scary part, y'all, is there's good harvest and bad harvest. Because it could be that one time, I always hear people say, it was only once. <laughs> That's all it takes. It could be that one time, that one, that one action, that one act 
is the, the bad seed that produces a hundredfold. That one time is that which produces the hundredfold. All the good that you've done. All of it at that particular time, you got a hand full of ten folds, five folds, zero folds, one folds, right? And you got that one time that's in the middle of the bunch. So he says right there, so from morning until evening. So from morning until evening. Because we don't know. We don't know what's going to produce what. And uh, a part of... Uh, Back to the discussion that we had last time, a part of that discussion also, we talked about how things that we do really go a lot further than the surface. We, we, we tend to stop at the surface. We tend to stop at, you know, well, I'm, 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 I don't curse, I don't kill, I don't steal, I don't do this, I don't do that, right? But we've got to take that thing down. We gotta take that thing down. So I want to read that uh, text one more time uh, in Colossians, Colossians three and twenty-three through twenty-five. Colossians three, chapter three, verse twenty-three. I'm gonna read down. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the master and not to men. Knowing that from the master you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. What does it say? Receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the master Messiah you serve. We got to remember that. It's him. But he who does wrong shall be repaid for the wrong which he has done, and there is no partiality. Mm. Does that not sound like sowing and reaping? Yeah. For the wrong yeah. that you've done, you will be repaid for the wrong. But what does he say right before there? That if we do all things heartily as unto, uh, unto Yeshua Messiah, then we will understand, we understand something. Number one, going back over to where we were at in Ecclesiastes, that as we sow, we are doing it continually. We are <coughs> monitoring our actions continually. We are conscious of, of representing Messiah continually. So then we go back to Colossians here, and it says do it heartily, because this is unto the Master, because in 24 it says who we serve. It tells us exactly what we're doing. It is the Master Messiah that you serve. So if we are moping around, if we're talking junk about the boss, if we're talking junk about this one and that one, and we're doing this and we're doing that, then what happens really? I mean, it we then, it seems like things are getting mixed up. We're, we're not realizing we're not there for them. We're there for the, for, the, for the Messiah. That's why we're there. Because He has sown us. Remember what He said, I will gather you from where? From all the nations where I have scattered you. So He scattered us. And exactly as he scatters us, he puts us in a place for a reason. Why? Why are we here? What's the point? What's the purpose? It's actually very simple. It's to reap a harvest. It's to reap a harvest. If he would have taken all of Israel and left us in Israel, left us in the land, what what well, harvest would he have reaped? But he didn't do that. He sowed us into all the earth. Hallelujah. He sowed us, and then he said, I will regather you. And what happened when they left out of Egypt? He didn't just regather the offspring of the 70, mm -hmm. but he regathered a mixed multitude. And very simply, that was the representation that he put them in there as a seed. 
and they came out as a harvest. You never expect, there is no seed that I know of that is anywhere near the size that it will be at its fullest point. So if the seed is this small, it could be a tree. It could be, you know, it could be, you know, I don't know. I would love to see the biggest tree in the world and the seed that produced it. I mean, imagine that. And it's probably not a number big enough to say the, 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 the size multiplied by, <laughs> you know, you have to get into all of the other uh, uh, powers and stuff that, you know, I don't like that stuff. Like that. <laughs> the 15,000 power. Uh, but really looking at the magnitude that that seed has now grown to and produced. So could you imagine? Could you imagine? had not been conscious, had not been aware, had not been um, in control of those actions. And that seed produces that type of tree. One that could possibly overshadow your entire life. One that could change your entire makeup. One that could completely rearrange where you're supposed to go. So if we could at least get the piece of this message right here, that whatever we do, we do it for our master. Right. We do it for our master. We do it heartily as unto him. Amen. Why? Yes. Because we never know. We never know. He has put us here to produce a fruit. So again, that handful of seed. Yes. Back in the Ecclesiastes. That handful of seed. We don't know. We never know what's the hundredfold. That's right. We've got to look at every aspect. So this is my challenge for every one of you. Is that we would take away. Take away the, the, the boundaries of the one day a week. Take away the boundaries of certain people, being in certain people's presence. Take away the boundaries of, um, I'm, I'm this way when I'm here, I'm that way when I'm there. And look at it from the perspective that we do all things heartily. Look at it from the perspective as if you are sowing constantly. That in all that we do, we are sowing the seed. And fast forward to what you want that harvest to be. Because if you want a good harvest, you will sow the seeds. And we've got to get rid of these boundaries that we put up. Because this is what we tend to do. Well, how are you doing today? Well, depending on who's asking me, I'm blessed and highly favored. Somebody else asked me, man, I'm straight, yo. Somebody else asked me, you know what I'm saying? We take these personalities and we trade them out. <laughs> we trade out personalities based on who we're dealing with and where we're at at the time. Is it Shabbat? Oh, man, I say that. <laughs> <laughs> And I do that. <laughs> you know, when we was kids, you know, might be revealed a little bit more, but um, we, <laughs> too late. <laughs> when we was kids, when we were younger, I'll say not kids, but you know, junior high school, high school. You know, you're hanging out with your buddies or whatever. Y'all be walking down the street, talking about all kind of stuff, right? Then all of a sudden, you walk past the church. Man, don't talk about that. We on church ground. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> man, don't talk. You can just talk cover, man. You on church ground, man. <laughs> <laughs> but truly, if we can get to a place in our lives, and that's an extreme example, but if we can get to a place in our lives where we truly honor and respect the holiness of Yahweh at all times at any cost, we'll be so much better off. 
we'll sow the good seed. And I'm not saying we can ever be perfect, because we're not, period. That's not even a, a thought in my mind, is that we can, we can do everything the right way all the time. That's not what I'm getting at, because I know that that's why we have Him. We have Him to lead us and to guide us in all truth. So that means that He got to snatch us by the neck every now and then. That's that curled hook on the end of the staff. That's why he's gotten on there. So he can snatch us back if he needs to, right? So when that happens, that's because we've gotten out of line. So I'm not even for a second pretending that we don't get out of line. But what I'm saying is if we can make a conscious decision that in all areas of my life, if there was a camera following me every second of the day, that I would not be ashamed that I would not have to say why I really uh, don't play that part. Let's get past that part. Don't nobody know about that. Let's 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 fast forward. Stop right there. You know? If we can begin to understand that all things really does mean all things heartily. Heartily then we will then understand that part of our brain, that reticular activator system will cut on. And when we encounter these situations where it might not be the greatest, we can truly speak things as they are into existence. We can speak it into existence. We can do the things that will get us to where we need to get. Because sometimes, truly y'all, we want something for nothing. We want something. You know, I mean, in, in, in my line of work, I always have to ask people about risk tolerance. How much risk are you willing to take on? Nobody's ever willing, willing to take on any risk, but everybody wants the most return. Nobody ever looks at it and says, well, I know I got to take more risk if I want more return. they just like, oh, I'm losing that. I don't want to lose <laughs> Well, the market does 20%. How much you want? I want 20%. <laughs> but the market's down 20. You want down 20 then. But what we have to understand is that we can't have something for nothing. It takes our putting in. It takes work on our part. So as we sow, as we sow, we can then reap. And more importantly, y'all, those around us can reap. Because one of the things that Yahweh did is he said in the seventh year, what happens? He said, don't even, don't even harvest the edges. That's right. Don't even harvest it. Leave it. Leave it for the fatherless. Leave it for the widows. Leave it for the orphans. Leave it for those strangers among you who haven't been given the opportunity. Leave it for them. Why? Because they are now reaping from your sowing. And there is no greater, no greater accomplishment than for you to sow someone else reap. That's right. Because truly, what did Yeshua do? Did he die for himself? Did he die for his own sins? He was sinless. That's right. Completely. That's right. Completely sinless. So again, the and the reason I wanted to come back to this is I really wanted to focus in on the connection between understanding who would serve we're serving the master and that we're doing all things heartily as unto him and how that connects to we can't pick and choose which seed has the harvest so we gotta be careful we gotta sow good things all the time it's the only way because one thing we do know and that's you know the scripture says all things work together for the good of those who love Yahweh and who are called, who are called according to his purpose. So sometimes we may sow what we feel is really good stuff. And it don't look so good as it's coming out the ground. 
I know I played at some azaleas a few years, about two years ago. And I had no idea that azaleas only bloom one month out of the year. So I'm, I planted it, and I'm like, you know, it's nice and green. I'm like, yeah, we'll get some color in this pretty soon. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And up it sprouts, and all of the colors are there. And it's like, oh, man, look at that. I did it. And then like four weeks later, the thing's just falling off. I'm like, good gracious, I'm like, I'm a dog. So the next year, I'm like, okay, maybe now just the first year I need to get used to, you know. So, you know, it comes up again. Four weeks later, it's gone. I'm like, what in the world? So then I decided I was going to look up for Zelda. And I saw. Well, they only bloom in April. <laughs> Period. <laughs> By the end of April, they're gone. <laughs> so truly, it was just simply the fact that I didn't realize what I was planting was doing what it was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we plant things without understanding how we plant it, where we plant it, why we plant it. And it's doing what it's supposed to do. But you're confused by the results. Why? You didn't study what you, what you, what you sowed. You didn't understand what you planted. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. There's some situations, y'all, that we go through. It's doing what it's supposed to do. You don't always realize it at that time. And sometimes it takes situations to come and for you to be removed from it. Sometimes it takes a year or two later for you to look back on it and to say, well, that's why. So truly, if we find ourselves in a place where we are constantly understanding who, we ma who our master is, and if we find ourselves in a situation where we are sowing what we're supposed to sow, we're not sowing sparingly, we're sowing from the morning until the evening. We're not discriminating. We're not trying to figure out which seed is going to have the best harvest so we can take a shortcut and get rid of all of the other stuff. But truly, we're doing what we're called to do. And sometimes things still might not look good. Well, that's when we understand that all things work together. All things work together. All things work together. So if we are doing good, what do we sell? What do we reap? Yeah. Even if it looks bad now, I can promise you, if you plant an apple tree, you're not going to get oranges. I promise you that. I promise you that. And Yahweh has put that principle in the earth. He's put it in the earth. So it's in the earth. And what did he do with us? He made us from the earth. And not only that, he made us in his image. So we've got it. It's inside. We've got it. We've got it. So understanding the power that he has put within us, we can then be conscious that we don't abuse or misuse that power. Don't abuse. Don't misuse the power that he's placed within us. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah.